now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Blackberry Merlot is on deck. Happy um, Saturday night. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, so according to this, we already got people up in here, or we at do. least we had we had someone. And oh, don't get salty with us because we late. Sorry, technical <laughs> difficulties. Technical difficulty. Right. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I'm just glad that like the link worked because I was like, knowing me, I'll be the one holding us up. I think I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to move. Go. I'm going to move because I feel like it's dark and I don't want to be, you know. And I can't spell difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I promised she was not drinking before she went live. Right? Okay. Oh, we got a whole bunch of people. We got 13 people up in here. What? Do What's we? up, y'all? Yes. Thank Hello, you. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, Bear yeah. with us. We a mess. Yes, we are. Yes. We, 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 we's drinking already. Okay. Yes, so, this is so much better. Okay. I'm oh, okay. Here. Yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Go take a shower, please. Oh, my goodness. I should have. So. <laughs> Let me just okay. So I'm by myself tonight because the husband had to go up and attend a funeral for one of his family members, and it was like okay, we had waited from last night to tonight because you know your husband went to see a movie and stuff like that. But I was just like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not changing it again because we got some hot takes. We got some hot takes to talk about. So tonight's wine glass is. I love books, booze, and fictional t boys with tattoos. So okay, yes. And, and then I of got course, the cheap ski from the grocery store. Oh, um, this is cheap too. Um, it's called Gallo Family, and it's I sweet grape. It. Um, so we're light tonight. We're light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the grape <laughs> juice. Doing the grape juice. Yes, communion. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, oh goodness. I was refreshing. Uh, yep. Everybody, everybody was like, oh, see, we got so many people here that are ready for the hot tea. Oh, really? Yes. We're up to 15. Okay. And... What do we want to start with? What are we starting with? Okay. Let's start with what we like just finished or are currently reading type or, you know, type thing. Uh, let's go ahead and get that out the way. Because that's something, something simple, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you know, we can chat, chat about. Uh, I did read, oh, India's here, India's here. Oh, she Hi, just checked India. in. Hi, India. <laughs> um, so I did finish the, what was it? Claimed by the Open King, I think it was. That you yes. It was, it was hot trash, right? It was hot trash. <laughs> but it was everything that I didn't know that I needed in my life right then, right? I mean, I, I, was, I had never read an Elfin King book before. And this oh one was God. just like, okay, um, who else was reading it with us? I can't remember who else it was. I think Storm. Uh, uh, I think Storm. Was Storm? Was reading, yeah, she was reading okay. it. Yeah, and she was she wasn't it. feeling it. I was she like, girl, we're just it. reading it because it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> but it's breeding, and I'm I'm okay with breeding, you know, every once in a while. I'm like, hey, give me some breeding, you know, some wham bam, thank you, ma'am. But by the end of the story, it wasn't about the whole breeding yeah. portion of it. So I was like, yay, I was yeah. here for that. So that was my first like paranormal romance like that. Oh really? Yeah, like I don't I haven't done shifters and all that stuff. So that was my first time. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. I, I can understand. Audible I can understand. Escape. <laughs> yes, yes. Pimp in the audible escape. Yeah. Um, uh, audible, you want to give me an affiliate code, please? <laughs> Did you find Ghost Boo? I haven't started it yet. No, I did find it. It was okay. in Kendall Unlimited, but I have just uh, canceled that subscription. Oh. Uh, so no. I was on, yeah, I was on the like three month free or whatever or for a low price or something like that. And it was coming up and I was like, oh, that's to cancel. Because like, like, not yeah. spending $9.99, you know, 
Yeah, right I break up so. with them all the time. It's like, okay. And then they'll have yeah. another sale and I'll be back right with them back. again for a little bit. And, and see, you know, I don't even, I don't read the stuff on Kindle Unlimited as fast as I should. Like, I don't think I've read anything on there. Yeah. But having them, I can get audiobooks for cheaper. Like if the audiobook's not on Audible Escape, that's like the main reason why I keep them. Because it'll show that I already have it on my Kindle. So then instead oh, of yep. it being like <laughs> it'll be like 7.49. And I'm like, click, click. Yep, while well, you got it. While well, you got yeah. it. Yep, it's discounted. Yes. Yeah. That is very true. That is very true. Because I did have a couple that I, I purchased like that. And then I was yeah. like, cancel. Ooh. Let's. <laughs> But so I still everybody, the, uh, you know, we've the been audiobook. talking about. Let's tell everybody what our we're going to be reading. Hollow, it's not ghost boo. It's Halloween boo. My bad. Yeah. We're going to be. I don't even know where my camera is. This is the cover, guys. This is the trash that we're. I hear it's really good. Really? Well, <laughs> I was looking, and she has like six of them for all the different seasons and stuff like that. Do you want to say hi? They're not going to be able to see you. Okay, then go take a shower and get ready for bed. <laughs> Hi, Lou. Motherhood. Love you. Right? <laughs> Motherhood. I Motherhood. Know. Mom um, fails right now. <laughs> so that's the only thing. I finished that this morning and I didn't read any girl. I forgot. I didn't even forget because when I did YouTube before, I did everything on my phone. It took me like 10 minutes. I don't. I did not realize how much work went into booktubing. I spent like three hours out of my day doing one video that was less than seven minutes long. So <laughs> right? I didn't get any other reading done. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot. And you know, I put out three videos um, a week, a week. So yeah, <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, but ooh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so I got some book mail. I had to have to show you guys. I got this ARC copy of Wonder Love by Rachel Welfeld. She is such an awesome indie author and she's so sweet. She like, uh, she supports me completely, like has been from like the start awesome. and stuff like that. She reached out to me the other day and was like, hey, what's your address? And I was like, here you go. <laughs> you know, that makes me think because our last chat, right, we, we kind of talked about that a little bit. And really, it's yep. just, I saw firsthand literally the day after we talked about that. If you support them, they're going to support you. So oh, yeah, I think definitely. it was somebody posted this author on, I think, Instagram or Twitter. Her name is Moni Boyce, and she writes like, I guess, black fantasy paranormal romances. And I like put one of the books in my story. Like, I can't wait to get this. Cause I was about, it was like 99 cents on mm -hmm. Kindle. She messaged me and was like, I'll send you this book and the new book when I get the copies in like a week. And I was like, Oh, that was cool. What? All I did was post it in my story. All you story. gotta do is put like, it out there. Put yeah, out there. so romance yes. authors be showing love. You show them uh, love yes. and they're gonna, you know, help oh, you yes. out. So it's like, Yes, ma'am. I will yes. send them. It's like a black female vampire hunter. I'm down. Oh, I'm down. what? Sign I'm into up. vampires right now. So yes. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh my Okay, goodness. so let's oh. talk about the article. I couldn't find the most recent article. Okay. I was so reading the old ones. There are two articles. Um, and one was written back in where is it? Oh, see, yes, I took notes too. <laughs> Girl. One in May. Um, there was one in May, and then I think one in. So mm -hmm. Jasmine actually wrote an article in Oprah Oprah's magazine herself. Oh no! Oh, no. March of 2019. Oh which no! Is practically the same exact article that was just released on September 3rd. <gasps> okay. Yes. So Tell pretty me much. More. Pretty Tell much me more. All that whole queen of romance and consent and doing what women want and you know we need a voice out there um that all came from her back then no. yes yes okay i haven't seen that article because the Ooh. ones that i was reading i was like okay maybe i need to lighten up on her a little bit mm -mm. But no drinks to that no okay <laughs> Um, because I went and I did a Jasmine Gillery search 
on, on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> no, on Twitter. Okay. I'm on Twitter because I was like, let me see what all, you know, because that's where we all saw it. That's where it has blown up and went crazy is over on Twitter. And I was like, let me just search her name real quick. And then I just started scrolling, 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 scrolling. And I was like, oh, dang. Okay. Back this far. And oh, wow. it's just a whole bunch of, it, it's a whole bunch of copying and pasting. Like uh, somebody said over on Twitter the other day that these authors or these journalists, journalists, um, aren't fact checking. They're just taking somebody else's article and just using it and then adding a little more to make it their own, not fact checking what's actually on there and stuff like that. So I'm just like, "Mm." Ooh, but yeah, to call yourself the queen of contemporary romance and you just put out a book in 2018, boo, I'm going to need you to sit down because the wedding date is still pretty brand damn new. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. See, that's my only issue with these art. Like, I was thinking, I was like, don't get on here and be so one sided. Like, do your research. Maybe I'm missing something. And so I sat down and I was reading the articles. I read two. So she said in 2013, that's when she really read, started reading a lot of romance. She read like 200 romances. And she was just like, why do I have to dig for romances by people of color? So then I was trying to put my mind in like, what, what, what was going on in the world in 2013? Was the internet, what it, like, it mm-hmm. can't, was it that hard to find black romances back then? I don't know. I can't remember what the internet was like and all that. But I'm like, honey, Beverly Jenkins has been writing novels. <laughs> okay. So I saw that same line and I went back to my Goodreads and was like, let me go back and look. Yes. Yeah. Girlfriend, I was reading black authors back in 2014. Now, so they was, a, my, they was they around. Were around. They was around. Okay. <laughs> and that's an indie author. Her name is Love Bevan. Dev- mm-hmm. Devlin and I read four of her books four of her books uh back then I also read Nana Malone back in 2014 Nina Perez back in 2014 Jay or no PJ Adams back in 2014 um Shanora Williams back in 2015 and then in 2018 is when I started hitting up those bigger black authors of um you know, Brenda Jackson, Beverly Jenkins, you know, uh, Walter Dean Myers. And he's not a, he's not a, whatchamacallit, romance writer, but he's a black author. Um, you know, Rachel Ehlers, Zora Cox, Danielle Clayton, uh, you know, and the list just goes on. So oh, like, so he was around. We were around. Right. right. <laughs> yes. And that wasn't even, you know, Beverly Jenkins and Brenda Jackson and Rochelle. Both of the, all three of them had backlists that were yeah. just humongous. I just found them in 2018, but I would never be like, oh, they weren't around. They were right. around. They right. were just so around. I mean, Rachel right here, let's see, I got this one from the library. And this one was published. When was it? Okay, this is only a 2017 one, but still, I know, I know, I know. She has a backlist. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's Bless like, her heart. she's not new. She's, I, she's not new. She Let's new. give Auntie Rachel her cred. Right. Okay. Let's give okay. It to her. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. She better, she been here for a minute. So. So in the article I read, I guess her, whoever picked her up from Berkeley, like, got mm-hmm. her on board, said, yeah. we're calling her a gateway author. She, for first time readers of the romance genre, they can read her and then that'll make them want to dig deeper into the genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was like, mm. <laughs> so there's the link for the open one that I was talking about. Thank so. you, Danielle. <laughs> yes. And then further on in the article, they said, you write incredibly approachable romance. <laughs> Oh, also in there, she was talking about how it's not about slavery, it's not about oppression, it's not about this, it's about successful women that, you know, are black and da da I'm like, boo, I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch <laughs> of characters from those authors that I just named off 
because uh, I know the one from Nana Malone was a pro tennis star that ended up getting injured and has a successful photography studio and getting her name out there and stuff like that. Although she does it anonymously, she's still getting her name out there. And I'm like, that was back in 2014, boo. That was like, what, for yeah. you, for you? So yeah, we've been writing success some women and, you oh, know, for a long time, for a long time, for a long time. And even those narratives that are like, you know, if you pick up Beverly Jenkins, it's going to be something historical. I think she does have some contemporary ones, but mm -hmm. her historicals are what's bigger. But and for me, I'll be honest, like I was real intimidated first. Like, I want to read this because we get tired of reading the slave narrative. We do. Right. But I think she does a wonderful job of just reminding you that even though there was this really crappy time, people still fell in love and found love. So it's like, don't hush those voices either. You know? Oh yeah, definitely. And it shows that, you know, it's like they're strong during these times of oppression. And every single time I read a Beverly Jenkins book, I'm like, teach me. You've been taught me, take me to school. I'm back in, I'm back in school again. <laughs> But that's okay because I'm still drawn to this book. I'm still all in this book. So give me my pirate hero. <laughs> he's probably gonna be a pirate. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. So yeah. And so that brings us to the newest article from Kennedy Ryan. She was oh. interviewed. You oh, haven't I seen the article? I haven't seen it. Oh no. This isn't a hot take. This is to show that contrast and how we're not going to be imbalanced in our uh, critique and spill of hot tea tonight. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> she had an article with Entertainment Weekly who did her double um, cover reveal for her new duet coming out later on this year. And in that article, Mama, oh, she gives so much credit. She gives credit to Shonda Rhimes. She gives credit to Beverly. Jenkins, I'm pretty sure she says Bev's name specifically, but she is like humble in that in that article all around saying that, you know, even though I was the first to win Arita, Arita. there were so there are so many other black authors that you guys, you know, that I may be standing on their shoulders to get here, but I'm not forgetting about them because they are the ones that are lifting me up. And I was just like, yes, this is why I love you, Kennedy. This is why I love you, I would have cried. I probably shouldn't read it because I Woo! would probably cry. <laughs> yes, yes. So I've gotten all my tears out when it comes to Kennedy Ryan. I mean, I got the honor of in interviewing her in 2016 and I was just like, awed by her then and now I like stalk her like everywhere and if I can get I know, to see her I'm like I, I am going to see Kennedy just so I can get a big old hug and you know be there and uh yes so she's just amazing and whenever I get to hear her talk or just even conversate with her it's just like yes yeah, this is why I love you this is why I love you because she keeps it completely real and she will let you know yes. like for long shot i know she said this in quite a few interviews and when i saw her at a panel in a polycon last year in 2019 she was like when i started writing long shot which deals with domestic violence she was like i started writing and then i had to stop and take a step back mm -hmm. do my research find out you know what actual survivors are talking about or saying yeah. or feeling and things like that. And then she went back and finished writing that book. And that book is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but it is one of those hard. realistic, hard, hard books to read. So yes, I'm a, oh yes. Uh, so give me your feelings on, um, let's see. Do you have to see yourself in books, in the romances that you're reading? Are you looking for, say, um, you know, the specifics of reading about a person of a color or a black person, um, does the characters have to have, you know, it spelled out to you um, when it comes to color or can it be an attitude or can it be a feel or how do you go about that question of why you're more drawn or are you more drawn to books that are, you know, laid out like that while I go through some comments? 
I think for me, the only time that I really pay attention to it, and this is probably bad on me, but I don't know. I think it's easy to imagine yourself if it's a contemporary. And I think that's why I prefer contemporary romances. But historical romances is where it's hard because it's very spelled out that this is what it is. And you're kind of hit in the face with like, oh, I would not be anywhere up in here. And if I was, I would be here. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how it is for me. So contemporary, I don't really delve too deep into it because I'm like, I could imagine myself in this world. But when it comes to like the historicals, that's when I'm just like, mm, no. <laughs> You know, I don't know. That sounds bad, but that's what it is. Oh, no, I feel you. I completely feel you on that one because, I mean, I'm the same way. I Like, I've been reading since 2012, and now that I'm reading almost a book a day, sometimes two books a day, um, it's not about having the person or the characters described to me, you know, oh, they have white skin, they have brown skin, they have olive skin, or, you know, that milk chocolate caramel mocha latte. I don't need all that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me the person's personality. And if I can find a trait that is like mine, then it's yeah. a book that I can relate to. So, you know, it's just like, it's weird. And it, it really sort of gets me when people are so drawn over on Twitter to saying, you know, oh, there aren't any books that are written with characters that are like me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but, are, aren't you, aren't we supposed to be in that world or in that society of I'm more than just the color of my skin? It right. shouldn't it be more about the, you know, the character of the character in that book. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to that character? Can you relate to their struggle? Because pretty much it's just the color of our skin. It's not our struggle. I can struggle just as much as this white person over here can struggle. You know, we could have mm -hmm. the same struggle. And just because we're two different colors of skin doesn't mean that it's different. We yeah. can still relate to that struggle. And then if you're so specific like that, you got to think about all the great books you're possibly missing out on because you want to be so specific. You know, if I pick up a book and I really see myself in the character, then great. But I don't go into it wanting to identify too, too much with the character, you know, I think mm -hmm. a lot of times too, I'm just more of an experience. Like I want the experience of reading a book and it's more of the emotional attachment and all of that. Like, I don't know, because I mean, there's characters that you hate, but you're like, <laughs> damn, the author really wrote them really good because I hated them, you know? Yeah. That is oh. so true. That is so true. <laughs> so this brings us to uh, a book oh that you DNF and oh God. that I hate read uh, yesterday. I saw it. <laughs> Woo. And it's called Faker. Oh my goodness. So there oh, are Berkeley uh, done did us wrong again. Is that Berkeley too? Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. We might have to cancel that, that publishing house. <laughs> I mean, they already don't fool with us, so <laughs> shit, no shade, but shade. <laughs> yeah, I oh, told wow. you. Okay, so you finished it. I finished it. Oh, oh girl, I DNF that thing like two chapters in. I, I could. I not. mean, I, I literally hate read that book. I did. I did. I hate read it. And I think the Lisa, Lord. Lisa finished it, but I think she didn't like it. I, um, I don't know. Our girl Lauren liked it, but she didn't put any description on why she liked it. I was like, why'd you like it? What? <laughs> I can't wait to find out what your reasons are. And she's like, why? And I'm like. I mean, I hear that it that it does get cute, but I just could not no, get past the fact. No, it doesn't. In the first chapter, girl, I highlighted like three times where she talked about how pale, pale the hero whiteness, was. Milky. Oh. And I'm sitting here like, what is your strange fascination with paleness? And then she's just, she describes herself as olive skinned. And I'm like, this does not look like the girl on the cover. Mm -mm. But she, it's but been that's damn the, illustrated covers. But she's she says she's olive, but at the same time, she is Filipino, Filipino and, and no, 
No, white. She white. She Filipino. I thought she white. was Filipino and Hawaiian. They lived in Hawaii. Oh, okay. They lived in Hawaii until You're they right. got too expensive. Because I was looking at the cover, like this mm-hmm. girl is a brown girl. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. With this olive skin. I don't um, know. Mm, no. So somebody did not tell her the right description. <sighs> and what's even worse, I'm pretty sure it's own boat oin. Ugh, I can't even say that. Own voices. Yeah, and I'm I, like, I think I looked the author up. I think it is. is I that think how you're you right. Describe yourself, because I don't. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't describe myself as olive skin. Um, I mean, I got some pink going on, but I would yeah. say milk chocolate personally. I mean, I, 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 I would feel like that regardless of the book. Like, I don't want. I hate when authors constantly reiterate the same thing and that's mm-hmm. just I felt like she did that like right out the gate literally first chapter he's pale his paleness oh my god he's so pale and I was like I got it girl he's I think pale. I did a breakdown of it hold on I'm scrolling real quick because I left that sheet of paper upstairs on accident I think it comes out this month I think it comes out this month and then bromance comes out next month yeah well bromance is one that I think y'all should go read it was, it was cute it was real cute. I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it had some flaws, but for the most part, I did enjoy it. It didn't. It didn't end up being a the romance saves the marriage type thing. It right. the two characters actually worked out what they had need to work out. It was assisted by romance novels, but mm-hmm. you know they didn't. They didn't have to work it out. Oh my goodness! I cannot believe I don't know where that is. But I think I broke it down earlier and it was like she said the term pale paleness like <laughs> nine times. She said white, milky and milk like five or six times each or something like that. She said glow with in she conjunction did say glow. Oh, in conjunction did. with white skin <laughs> like 11 times or something like that. And I was just like, I'm going to need you to stop doing this. And it was all the way through the book, all yeah, the way through the end. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure the last chapter had something about his glowing skin. And da, da, da. I was like, I'm going to need you to stop. It's weird, right? It's I'm weird. So, who's, yes. Who's fascinated with, with skin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh once God. or twice, you know. Oh, yeah. Let like me a nice so I can picture him. Or whatever. I can you know, picture give me a, him. Give me a little, a little, little visual in my head that I can conjure up someone yeah. to uh, play my man, my main character. But it was like, yes. Mm. But then it gets creepy. It gets creepy. It was real creepy. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then she kept, um, she kept, uh, like concentrating on the fact that she was in a male-dominated. Um, company. Oh god, and yeah, that too. She had to be a boss bitch. Yeah, you know this and that. But when she went down to the, are you going to bed? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Um, when she went down to the um, like warehouse or whatever, and the guy supposedly was objectifying her. There was another female employee that was object- objectifying another guy in the office. Yeah. <laughs> but the male that was objectifying the female got fired and the woman didn't. I was like, what? how was that? Girl. Nothing was said to her, but you don't. And then it felt real insta lovey because she ended up getting injured and all of a sudden they were intimate and then they were hooking up and they were together. And I was just like, oh. I didn't make it that far. I didn't make it that far. <laughs> Ooh, I was right. Ooh, dear but boy. it made me think about, so I was listening to Wicked Wallflowers Club. They had an interview that they did this week. And the lady, I don't know where she's from, but she was talking about the publishing house. And she was basically talking about how the way that it came off to me was, are we putting stuff out there that's diverse just to say that we're putting stuff out there that's diverse and really 2019 has felt like that i'm like this is trash don't put it out i'd rather you put out some good stuff other than let's push this because it's diverse and then i'm reading it and i'm like this 
shit is trash. Yeah, 2019 has for the big publishing houses. I have really not been impressed. Nope, not at all. Not impressed at all. And I'm about to go after somebody's favorite, uh, the oh, Booktube's gosh. favorite, uh, Red, White, and World Blue. That's Ooh. a bunch of trash. I haven't trash. read it. I avoided oh, it. You oh. hated it. Jess hated it. I was like, hated it. It was trying to be so ultra woke that I was just like, I need you to not. Woman president, Mexican husband or Hispanic husband. Actually, I think he was Mexican. Let's Undocumented this. Check off, off, check off this. Uh, <laughs> bisexual, gay, son, daughter, you know, a blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay. Uh, you know, um, queen, not queen, uh, son, third in line, almost like a Henry um, is bisexual, but can't be bisexual because, or can't be gay because he has to produce heirs for the throne. You third in line, boo. If your brother <laughs> over here that is actually in line to take the crown, you won't be in the same situation that Harry is in now, who is now what? Seven, eight yeah. in line. And, um, Archie will never be in the line of secession. So, mm, I'm gonna need you to calm down that whole. Yeah. You should have picked the first in line to be. You know who I want to be in line. I want Charlotte to take it all over. Okay, can Heck Princess yeah. Charlotte? Yeah, but you know what? She's actually not in line. Yeah, because they got George. Yes, so it goes. Um, what you call it, Charles? But he gonna die before she do anyways. The queen. <laughs> Yo. I love the queen. I'd be looking at old school <laughs> pictures of the queen and I'm like, the queen is a G. She's always been a G. <laughs> she was in the military. Like I do the love queen. her. I love the queen. We need to give the queen a romance back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you watch that? Uh, did you watch the Netflix show, The Queen? No, I heard it's really good though. It is really good. It's like jaw dropping like dang she was really like that oh yeah okay um she was she's forward thinking but at the same time she's she's kind of backwards as well but you know i don't i don't believe half the drama that comes along with the news and stuff like that about megan and stuff like that we're so off topic but um the stuff well, they make Meg around. megan just sounds like such a diva and i'm like this girl probably be at home right? doing yoga right, <laughs> right? exactly and I really think Harry has got her back, like legit got yeah. her back. I mean, they're suing the star now or something like that because they have posted some emails or something or another harassing her. And she's like, he's like, um, you are not going to do to my wife what you did to my mother. So we go yeah. shut this down like right now. now. Full That's force. right, Harry. Okay? <laughs> mm. So, oh. Thank you, Bird on a Wire or Books on a Wire for giving us the line of succession. Use the bomb. Charles, William, <laughs> George, his prospective children. Then Charlotte. Oh, yep. No. Yep. And see, that that's what she, they, I listened to a podcast and they were talking about if they would have changed one rule, then Charlotte could have been in front of George. But whatever, oh, really? something happened and it's George. So we'll let George have his time, but I oh. want it to be Charlotte. Because <laughs> Charlotte looks like she's going to be a party girl. <laughs> oh, she got to be off the hook. Oh, she's no. going to be like the queen's sister, I think. I mean, just, she going to be off the chain. She going to be like, Psh, I'm not in the line of succession like up there, so I would do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> I'm going to oh, go out God. and party and I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Yeah. So, Oh my goodness. Oh yes, yes, I have seen the queen handling her gun and her horses and she be driving. Philip can't drive. <laughs> she took his license after his last accident. She was like, no, no more like no more driving. But when you. you're the For queen, she, that's what you can do. Okay. <sighs> Oh she didn't God. even in the license. Hey, Amanda from the Naughty Librarian is here. Amanda. Oh my goodness. So, uh, yeah. Romance is taking over the book too. Okay. Very slowly. Like we're slowly, tact but we are tactfully, tactfully taking over. Uh, yes, very much so. <laughs> very much so. Although, although us, uh, our, um, 
you know, it's still with the youngins. No offense to the youngins that are are, are participating in uh, being here. We do appreciate you. I do appreciate you. But uh, y'all need to shout out some OGs from, uh, sometime, please. I really appreciate it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> drink yeah. cheers 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 that yep mm -hmm. but i think it's cool i just think mm -hmm. you'll see somebody really big and they'll post a picture on ig or something and it's like read these romances and i'm sitting here like girl there have been booktubers talking about romance for years <laughs> you know oh yeah but i'm glad that it's like the article I talked to you guys all about and we put out there, whatever, people are getting older. You're you're gonna grow out of what you've been reading. That that's what happened to me. I started with YA. I read YA when I first found BookTube and I read it for like a year or two and then I grew out of it, you know. So no shade to adults who still read young adult. If that's what you want to do, then fine. But they're for some people, the reality is, is you grow out of it. And a lot of readers will admit that what they look for in their stories is the love story. So mm -hmm. that's another way that a lot of people make their way to romance. So, oh yeah, I don't know. Definitely. Think, and that brings us back to our, our, our claimed by the elf and king there. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> that was such a good dose of sci-fi fantasy. I'm sorry. I love yes. that. I loved it. I was like, "Ooh, that's such a cute. Oh, look at that tie-in. How it, we're they're in a different dimension than us. Yes. But we're living in the same sort of places at the same time. They're just a different dimension. And you were handpicked. And thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty hot. But um, I like the sun. Okay. Did you get to, did you get Balin? Yes. He was oh, so yeah. cute. I was like, I oh. love Balin. Oh, he's yeah. so great. He was like protecting his mom and oh yeah. So I yesterday, guys, we had this random idea. We were like, let's go on Audible Escape and pick something random. And so we went to magic, because you know they have the categories. And we're just like, what is this elf story? <laughs> we have not read an elf story. And before we know it. We love it. So I highly recommend going on Audible Skate if you pay for it and just download something random. Yes. Yes, definitely random. Definitely. And Danielle, yes, they are not very respectful of the older books. And which is really funny, right? Because the older books are the older readers. The books? I think, well, it says older books on here. Okay. So, um, Maybe I think that's is. that's a thing, just period. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. It's mm -hmm. all about you want to show the brand new book. And I'm like, mm -hmm. people got backlists. <laughs> right? Like big backlists at that. Yeah. Um, but uh no, and the fact that we're putting so, like societal um I guess you could say norms of today on books that were written back then it's just like you can't really do that you can't like a lot of people like to throw in my face about like oh well because i don't like when the n-word is used in any literature unless it's set in that time frame or has the context of you know for it being used even if it's negative you know or whatever mm -hmm. it's like if it's not set back then, I don't want it in my romance today. Right. And using like the rape culture or, you know, the whole consent, which is what supposedly Miss JG, uh, you know, invented as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty they sure. They did talk about consent. Pretty yeah. sure um, that well, they said it was in the proposal that they went over consent. But um, you know, I dragged Roman Holiday or Royal Holiday or whatever that stinking last book. The older had. one, yes. About you know, she fifty. The character is fifty four years old. And don't get me wrong, like I have said before, don't get me wrong. It is you know older people and they need to worry about STDs and stuff like that, but. Come on. 
you 54, you know you ain't had none in a minute. Like in a minute. She made that very clear in the book that she ain't had none in a minute. But you talking about, oh, we need to make sure we got condoms. And, you know. She was I living her know. best life, Steph. She was living mm. her best life, okay? No. We are no, not going to hate mm -mm. on her. No, I'm going to hate on that. I'm going <laughs> to hate on that. I've actually had some 54-year-olds uh, talking about, okay, yes, I wouldn't have been um, <laughs> worried about all that. Thanks. Uh, I, I'm lucky to, you know, get it up, you know, get off and the, the, at 54 uh, pre-post-menopausal. I was like, thank you. Thank you. My thought process was the same. <laughs> but would like, I mean, do you ever, do you read older romances? Yes. So L.B. Dunbar does, has a great um, series of Silver Foxes. And I've read two of them, I believe it was. And I really enjoyed them. And all of those characters are like 45 and above. The two books that I read were like 50 year olds on both sides, the male and the female were 50 year olds. So it wasn't like a huge age gap thing. Oh, this 50 year old is, you know, taking over the 20 year old. But what or about the, um, what about like the older classic romance? Like you're going to have to go to the used bookstore and oh, try to track you know. down. I don't know. Uh, no, that's too much work for me. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, I have found a couple over on, um, See, I want to read some of the bad stuff I've just so that I can appreciate where we are kind of now because we've been putting out a lot of trash true. in 2019. But true, true. I haven't really read a whole bunch of like Harley Quinn or um, the Fabio covered romances or anything like that. I, that's not big into my genre. I mean, that's not big into my brand and stuff like that. But um, will I challenge myself to do it? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe a little. <laughs> if anybody has any good recommendations, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy on us. You're right. Uh, I might read them. I might read them. <laughs> Let's see. What's everybody saying over here? Oh, we're people are talking about uh the cartoon covers. Amanda was saying that it's a phenomenon, some marketing genius. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Um, it is. Everybody's like, oh, I gotta grab up every single illustrated cover I can possibly get my hands on, even if it's not a good book. So they're like, ooh, but right. I have the, I have to have the pretty cover. That, I, somebody said that recently. They was like, all these illustrated covers have been terrible books. <laughs> and I was like, in a way, I agree. I mean, the yeah. I love The Unhoneymooners. It was good. That was <laughs> like cute. Probably but, my can, but is it really an illustrated cover? I know. I know that's an argument people have too. It's I like know. that's more of an artsy one. Um, I I'm hard pressed to like name one that is that I actually liked that uh had an illustrated cover. I mean, like I, I don't mind the illustration. And Sarah from Steeped in Books has said before, this is not new. Like we've been having illustrated covers, but now you know it's a big deal or whatever. But my thing is when people are like, oh, now I can kind of disguise that I'm reading romance. Huh. Bitch, it's 2019. Hmm. Read whatever you want to read. I wish somebody right. would talk to me and be like, oh my gosh, you're reading mommy porn. Yes, I am. Mind okay. your business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you definitely. <know>? Definitely. <laughs> oh, yes. Meet Cute was definitely a uh, misrepresentation. That book was much heavier. Then I, uh, I didn't even read it after I heard you guys say from Helena Yeah, I was like, nope, nope, I'm not reading it. <laughs> I wasn't in the it's mood. good. It's, it's good, good, but it's, it's definitely heavier. Than they sent it in springtime. It looked like it was going to be fun, and then y'all were all like, "Oh no, it's way serious. It's not fun." I'm like, "Well, I'm not in the mood for this." <laughs> I thought it was fun. I wanted fun. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I guess I could go back and say that one. Um, Gosh, yeah. I but mean, yeah, I just off the top of that, I don't think I can do it. Illustrated. I'm not a big illustrated cover person. So, can uh, you imagine long shot being illustrated? Do you see that fine specimen of a man on the cover of that book? <laughs> I can't. That not. whole series, all I her men, know. all her know. men was amazing. And they so embodied their persona of the character that was in those books long so the books we're talking about is long shot book shot and block shot 
Um, it's the Hoop series by Kennedy Ryan, and those men on it's all about basketball. Um, revolves around basketball, and those covers are amazing. Rumptious. Amazing, yes, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, well, okay, so well met. Did you finish reading well met? Uh oh, uh oh. <gasps> Did you finish reading well met or no? I finished it. Oh, uh, do we have differing? Of, we, I mean, I thought you were sort of on the fence. You were like, eh, it was okay. I'm on the fence. Okay, I okay, so with well met, the thing that I liked was. The plot, the storyline. I really didn't like the heroine. The hero was okay. I just am like, I don't really know why this book is that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, I think I related to Well Met a little more because, um, like I think I said in my review, that I actually live close to that, that Maryland area. Renaissance Fair and how renaissance fairs are super huge and you know i actually have experienced the maryland renaissance fair in which they talk about but on a smaller scale for theirs in the book um and it is a big thing it is such a huge thing i mean like these players are like living it yeah are like in that end scene <laughs> you know dedicated the costume dedicated into their craft of being part of that renaissance you know, air and stuff like that. And I could, I placed myself into the story. So it was like, okay, I can see how our characters, you know, but then there were times that both characters, it seemed like they just weren't listening to each other. Yeah. And I was like, he is telling you, this is why he is the way he is. She is telling you, this is why she is the way she is, but still you get mad at each other. Come yeah. on. Come on, I'm gonna need you not to not to do that. So yeah, I have read um, a couple of other books that go around uh, Renaissance fairs, like the one Renaissance Man from Tessa Bailey. She did it for the Romance, uh, not Romance, Read Me Romance podcast uh, in season one, I think it was, or maybe it was the beginning of season two that she did that book, but. I loved it. Do you I wait it for Do you wait for them to finish a book before you go listen, or do you just w listen, wait for the next week? So before I was jobless, <laughs> and uh, they were putting out the book in five sections, I would listen to it every day, like at work or you mm -hmm. know the thirty minute drive or whatever, because most of the podcast would be like thirty minutes. Now that they have gone down to two night, two days a week, Mondays and Fridays, I actually wait until Fridays so to listen, listen to, to the it all one. Yep, yep. Oh, somebody brought up Fixer Up. Bye, Tessa. <laughs> and we're on different sides of this one too. So, <laughs> baby girl, if <laughs> if he said baby girl one more time. It was so cringy. See, I Sorry, liked it. I no, liked it. no, Stephanie. Did you I listen to okay. it on audio? Did you listen to it? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I got an arc. To it. I That's got probably why it was freaky to me because I was oh. listening to it. I couldn't because it's like we spend the first half of the book talking about how we're like brother and sister. I look at her like my little sister. And then when we're having yep. sex, it's baby girl. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no, it's weird. I can't. <laughs> okay. So I, when I read it as the arc, I did. This was Georgie, it. right? Her name was Georgie. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, I did listen to it on my, um, whatchamacallit, text-to-speech. So it was more robotic and it had no life to it whatsoever. So I did, re I mean, I read along when I listen to text-to-speech. Um, so if you guys are looking for clues on how to read faster and, you know, you have a Kindle Fire or you have a Kindle uh, device that can do text-to-speech, that is how you can do it. It keeps you going through the book at a good clip and you can get in so many books just to let you know um but 
So it was very robotic to me. It didn't, the whole baby, baby girl thing didn't bother me, but that is the main complaint that I hear when it comes to that book. Don't it be calling me weird. baby girl. Don't, don't use the phrase baby girl. It was weird. And I was like, okay. If he wasn't like talking about how who thought she was like a little sister, it might have been okay. But you was just talking about her <laughs> like she's Stop. family. Yeah. So mm, no thanks. That's weird. <laughs> I told you 2019 is just it's been a weird year. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still can't get over it. But, uh -oh. but that I mean that is there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, somebody said I think of Shamar more when I hear baby girl. From where? Oh Tasha? my god. Tasha, where does Shamar Moore say uh, baby girl? Because I don't remember him. But then again, I'm I like to see Shamar Moore just in random. I don't have to look at him all the time. Um SWAT's a good show, but I don't follow it like that. Wasn't I he on know. Young and the Restless when I was a kid? I think that's where I yeah. think of Shamar. <laughs> yeah. Young He's and the Restless. He's on that too. <laughs> Um, the only reason I know he's on SWAT is because I want to say it comes on CBS. And when I'm watching SEAL Team, they have commercials for SWAT <laughs> on there. That's the only time I get to see him. So it's like, eh. Or if I look up a, um, like, that type of GIF or picture mm -hmm. on the internet, his will pop up. And, uh, you know, of course, all my SEAL guys will pop up. And, so. Everybody let us know a popular book from this year that you didn't like. Let's do an unpopular opinion. Poll. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's hear some unpopular opinions. So we all know that I hated uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. So I will start this bad boy off uh, with that one. I will start with the right swipe. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one too. Hey. Drink. Hey. Go that. Drink. Yes, yes. We both hated it. Charles hated it. I don't know if Charles is here, but he's our guy friend that reads romance and he hated it. Yeah. <laughs> Go follow him. Books on stereo. We love you, Charles. Yes. Yes. Charles like ripped the book to shreds. He hated it. Oh, yes. They're still on Shamar Moore and Criminal Minds over here. <laughs> <laughs> So what, I, you Ooh. know, I think one thing too that like the romance booktubers are doing a good job of is we haven't been seeing, romance booktubers aren't talking a lot about the big romance books. I think we're mm -hmm. giving everybody a dosage of here's some books you probably skipped over while you was looking for that really big popular book. Yes, definitely, definitely. Like, Jess and Lisa and uh, Sarah, you know, I love Sarah's channel just because she does the older romance books. And yeah, I, I love her 40 Years of Harlequin. Woo, love it. I mean, I'm there for it. I am there for it. She has made my list like completely crazy. And yeah, Lacey see. reads a lot of paranormal. So I, I like seeing what Lacey reads because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We got, oh, somebody doesn't like. The push, but what? What? <gasps> oh, Lisa didn't like um, didn't like the kiss potion. Oh, I'm sorry. Do tell. I know. Please leave us a comment, Elisa, because we need to know. The kiss potion was quite well. I liked it a lot. And <laughs> oh my goodness, Geraldine, you didn't like resist. Oh. Resist and reveal from Kay Brownberg. Oh, that was my joke. That was my crap. I need crack. to pull these up because I don't know what that is. Oh my goodness! So I'll tell Are you. Are these about, new? Uh, yes, resist and Re uh, resist and reveal by Kay Brownberg is a story about a woman that has um, escorts. She's a madam, and Ooh, I like madams. <laughs> yeah, something happened within her. Um, like one of her dates and she had to step in for uh, that person and become the date. And she had to put on this persona and then she ended up hooking up with the guy. Didn't really take any, um, didn't take any money from him, but then did take some money. But then there's a whole bunch of mystery and political sort of intrigue and stuff like that that goes on to it. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed that duet. Um, 
Let's see. Somebody else said the flat share. I haven't read that one yet. I haven't uh, read it either. And I, I, I had the it. audio book from the library and I like was I like, no, it. I'll just turn it back in. <laughs> <laughs> and India didn't like save the date. I love save the date, but uh Which one she said she didn't hate date? it. Uh by Monica Murphy. It's the one about the uh like the coordinator of the weddings. She writes out where she orders the save the dates. Um, I'm the saving all these. And she actually knows the groom that comes in for her very early morning appointments and stuff like that. And then come to find out that Beyonce was cheating on him because when she drops off the save the date cards, she sees the female of the couple or whatever. And she's getting it on with somebody else. Mm. Yeah. And okay. then she, then they have to like fake date. Her and the ex fiance have to fake date because he has a business transaction over in Europe and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed it, but sweet, sweet India didn't. <laughs> oh, India. We know she either loves it or it's or she trash. Hates it. Yep. <laughs> I was like, yep, there's no in between. Okay. So we have some people that are like, um, Expect a lot more from the Kish Quotient, but love the bride test, birds and the wire. Um, yeah, see. The okay, bride, here's our reason. What'd she say? For some reason, the main male character acted during. Let me just put it up. So Ellie! For some reason, the way the male character acted during the sex scenes made me so uncomfortable. I can't figure out what exactly about him, but things he said and did made me cringe. Okay. Hmm. It's been a while since I read it. Yeah, I like yeah. Michael, and I listened to it in like two settings. I think I was driving down to a book event, and I listened to it on the way down, and I listened to it on the way back, or finished it on the way back, and was like, "Oh, I loved it." <laughs> it's so crazy it because it's a totally different vibe from the Bride Test. Totally different. Oh yes, oh yes, definitely, definitely. So I, I want to see, I'm wondering how the new book's going to be. Is it going to be more serious? Is it going to be fun like the Kiss Quotient was? I don't know. Well, now, see, I thought the Kiss Quotient was more fun versus mm -hmm. the Bride Test was more serious. More serious, yeah. And I was like, I was, I was here for that dynamic. So hopefully, or maybe she'll come in with a balance of both of them. A balance and, of both. You know, and India said that the fake dating just fell flat for her. Okay, I can see that because I did, I did sort of feel that way about Save the Date because it went from here's this couple and then they break up, but then here's this couple and now we're fake dating over in Europe. So I can see that sort of divide. It wasn't like a good, I don't think it was a good transition from, hey, we had a history to fake dating to this is now what we are. It was like, here's what we were. And now we're fake dating. So I can see that. I can see that. The more fake dating plots that I read, I love it. I think my top favorites would be fake dating, brother's best friend, except for fixer up, because don't call me baby girl. <laughs> and then I love office romances. Whitney G on Audible Escape has totally just turned me on to workplace romances. She's yeah. the bomb. She's yeah. the bomb. She makes me want more. I think I read the 30 Day Fiance. Boyfriend. 30 Day Boyfriend. 30 yeah. Day Boyfriend. Ooh, and I you was didn't like, like it, Stephanie? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I did like it. I did like it. But I wanted more. I was like, I know. It's what? short. It's so short. It got done. And I was like, what? I need, where, where's the rest of the, yeah. Where's the rest of the book? I need, I listen Something to like three like of her audiobooks one day during work. If y'all ever need a just audiobook binge at work, listen to Whitney G. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Danielle, you got me a little curious here. What'd she say? What is this? Whose author's note had you bawling? Ooh, who? Are we still talking about the quiz quotients that made you ball? Because I oh, guess that maybe. means. That means I'm gonna need to go back and look at that because I didn't read that one. That might be it. That might be it. Now I will tell you one that uh, had me in tears is uh, "When Ashes Fall" by Marnie Mann. That is a heavy book. 
Oh my goodness. It revolves around an event that happened here in the United States in real life. Um, I don't want to tell you which event because that would sort of spoil the book, but just know that it's a heavy event uh, that happens and our characters are just, wow, they're amazing. Um, but then the author's note. So I finished reading uh, When Ashes Fall the day I got to meet the author Marnie Mann at a polycon. And she was like, did you read the author's note? And I was like, there wasn't an author's note on the audible. And she was like, okay, I picked up the signed copy of the book and she was like, okay, take this upstairs and read the author's note. And then, you know, come back and see me. I went upstairs and I cried some more. <sighs> and then I went back downstairs and I went and just hugged her for like five minutes. I was just like, <laughs> Oh I, think we were, I think we were crying at the at the siding and stuff like that because it was just like, oh, it was so good. So For you good. dark romance readers, do y'all have to be in a specific mood? Like, what is it about dark romances? I'm just like, <laughs> I need them some fun. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I do not know what it is. Um. All I know is that I have loved me some dark romances ever since I read Consequences by Alethea Roman back in 2012. Uh, she That actual first book, Consequences, is not a dark romance. It's a psychological thriller. Uh -huh. And I've read that one twice because I read them as they came out. It's a five book series. And as they were coming out, I would go back and reread the books the to book before routine, yeah. to get re-familiarized with it and stuff like that. I mean, I have gotten to a point where I don't need to. Um, if I was to go and read the whole series, I could just read it straight through. Um, but I don't know. It's something about just that whole kidnapping, torture, um, <laughs> twistedness that's just like, yes, give me yeah. that tortured soul of a person <laughs> and it, it can be both it can be both characters it could just be the male character it could be the female character whatever it is it just just give it to me just oh oh yes so i can just feel their their emotion oh through that torture and i'm just like oh my goodness i just love it <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> oh my goodness so we got, let's see. So I know you like uh, dark romances. What draws you to dark romances? Brie? Oh, girl. I don't really do dark romances. That's why I was you asking. Don't? No. Oh, I thought you did. I thought you, I thought I was, I thought I was I mean, the dark side. I, <laughs> I don't know. Cause I, okay. So I downloaded, I had two Britney C. Cherry. She, she writes dark romances, right? No, no, I don't think so. Mm -mm. If you're talking about like the gravity of us and what is the other one? The first one is, what is the first so when one? When people say dark romances, are they talking about like our motorcycle romances considered dark romances? They can be. So when I say dark romance, okay, I'm talking about like emotional. I'm talking emotional, tortured, kidnapping, non-consensual sex. Uh, okay. Just the worst of the worst. You are thinking to yourself, why do I like this so much when it is morally just not right? Wrong. If this was to happen in real life, that it would is be reprehensible. With that Simone, why do I like the priest having sex in the church? Girl! So I'm less than thorns. What I'm 50%. I'm 50% oh. into that. Actually, I'm, I think I'm a little bit more, but I'm just like, Oh, everybody, Stephanie is reading A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone <laughs> in the year of our goddess, <laughs> Sierra Simone. Yes, yes, I'm Ooh. here for it. You got to the spin the bottle part. <laughs> I'm sitting in public, hallelujah for some earbuds, because I'm sitting in public watching my kids swim for two hours and was like, whoo. 
they're she's making out with Ooh, and then now we, they're <laughs> now we're staking people and yeah. yes <laughs> Hi. she is so Ooh. amazing mm. i like you know what it is i think it's and, and she is, took that spanking she took it yes <laughs> every yes. one of those spanks yeah it was like 35 of them too yes it was like a ridiculous amount. I was like, dang. It was okay. a religious experience. <laughs> yeah. So what I think it is, is they've talked about it on the Read Me Romance podcast. So if you've listened to all of the seasons, as a matter of fact, today was the last episode of season three and mm -hmm. season four starts on Monday. But um, if you've listened to all the banter between Alexa Riley and Tessa Bailey, they um, they're very into consent and, uh, you know, being in a safe space to explore your different kinds of kinks just because you like it as a book or as a storyline. It does not necessarily mean that that's what you want in your real life. And they right. reiterate that a lot throughout the podcast, throughout the podcast, if you listen to them um, on a regular basis. And. That I think is why I like dark romances so so much because yeah. it's you like don't want to be kidnapped safe, in real life, <laughs> okay? But in a safe space, in a safe novel, in a safe series, you know, I don't necessarily want to be spanked. Well, maybe I do, but um, <laughs> tears. <laughs> but some of the other things that happen. Have um, I seen some hot? Things? I don't know. Right. Um, okay. Um, thinking bad thoughts about you know kids that shouldn't be thought about. Uh, what Zach Efron? I mean, oh girl, when he turned eighteen, I was like, ooh, I need to, ooh, because I'm pretty sure I was like thirty years old when he was like eighteen. Oh my gosh, I know. I was feeling like I was so feeling him. I was like, like why is this little boy? <laughs> right. Just, but in a safe space. Ooh, I can talk about that. Yeah, okay. I can talk about that, right? And now, <laughs> have you seen him lately? Homeboy oh has like this, <laughs> this beardy, gruffy thing going. I'm, ooh, ooh, I'm, now he's grown. Ooh, he's grown, grown now. Yeah, grown. I can, hey, baby buddy. boy. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a second. Why can you say baby boy? But uh, I'm, I was throwing it out there because. <laughs> <laughs> Our main character can't say baby girl. Come on. No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, it was I cringed. <laughs> <laughs> I cringed so hard. Oh my goodness. Mm. So what are you gonna read next? Because we finished Elven King. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna read next? This is very true. So tomorrow is all about recording. And so Sunday's your day. You do everything. Um, sort of, because I have no clue what I'm putting out next week. Yeah, I have no clue. Actually, I think I'm doing like a five predict five out of my um TBR list, and then it's a recommendation video. So yeah, I do have two planned. Uh, but yeah, I guess I gotta write down all the information and record three videos tomorrow. Um, but then I also have to release one tomorrow. I have to release my weekly wrap up. Like so, wrap up. yeah. That's How many books have you read? Like, what what number are you at? I think I'm on nine. And if I can finish a lesson in thorns after we get off of here, then I think that'll be ten. I do hear that the next one sucks, but I'm still gonna read it. That's because. what I keep hearing. But at the same time, I'm like, it's a four book series. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. How good should book two be? Book two usually gets the, the shaft. Right? I mean, you usually, because like for her other book, I actually, for her other series, the new Camelot series. I haven't is, read that one. Right. So I didn't really like the American Queen. Okay. I was like, ah, I'm not feeling these characters. I'm just like, uh. and then I read the American Prince and I was like, Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. That's when it, the going got good. <laughs> right? And then by American King, and then there's a scene in it, I was like, oh. I threw down my Kindle. I was like, oh, 
so mad at her. <sighs> really? I was so angry. I was so mad that something happened. And I was just like, I'm not finishing this book. But then, of course, like 30 minutes later, I was like, oh, I got to finish. <laughs> But you know, the, so the thing about Sierra Simone that I just love is she straddles the line between a lot of stuff. Like mm -hmm. the historical series, the novella I read, the girl had literally just got assaulted. And then stuff is happening with it's like friends to lovers kicks in. But she made it make so much sense. Sense. And like you said earlier, morally, you're just questioning everything. But I was just like, I love this <laughs> and I shouldn't love it. But it's, mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know. She just, she straggles so many lines and in a way that just makes you think and it makes so much sense. So I just, I root for her. Even if the book is going to be trash, I'm going to read it. I mean, it's four books you said. So I think yeah. you said the third one comes out in like Jan February, January, February. And then Halloween, the Halloween one, which is, which is the last one, will be oh, out wow. in August. Yeah. So oh, wow. that one I'm excited for. Ooh. Um, but I did say that um, a lot of people are saying like for A Lesson in Thorns, you really need to like listen. And, or somebody had told me that they were like, you really need to listen to and like catch all the little details that she's throwing out there. Yeah. And when I started listening to it, I was like, okay, okay. Oh, this is yeah. going to lead to something new. Ooh, ooh, that's going to lead to something different. Oh, I can see where this is going, but I don't know that it's yeah. going to get closed out. And by the way, it's a four book series. I'm like, yeah, something's going to happen with all of this stuff because so much is thrown in there and you're just like, hmm, I don't know what's going on. Indy over here laughing at us because I said straddle. <laughs> Where did you say straddle? Somebody said straddle. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to agree with Books on a Wire that Sierra Simone is a safer version of Tiffany Reese. Oh, have Ooh. you read any Tiffany Reese? I read a Christmas romance of hers. Oh no, that's Shane. it. That's all I've read. That's all okay. I've read. See, the only thing that I've read of Tiffany's is uh, the original. Yes, she oh. is straight up BDSM. If you want a look into the lifestyle and all of that, check out Tiffany Reese and Red Phoenix. Okay, I read Red Phoenix. A long time ago, she went a little crazy with the whole let's put out a whole bunch of cereals and each book was like two ninety nine, and we're up into like the 20s. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to need you to stop. And now we got bundles of, you know, four and this bundle of three and, you know, volume one of this. And it's all the same story. And I'm like little changes. I'm like, I'm going to need you to I I'm going to give you a break right now. You're not getting any more of my money. But That's um interesting. It is a so Red Phoenix is in the lifestyle and all of her stories revolve around this uh young girl named Brie that gets into the lifestyle and it's like her journey through the lifestyle and it's absolutely phenomenal. It really is. It Ooh. will drag you in and be like, "Oh, let me go look on safe <laughs> mode for my Google." Um <laughs> Hey, girlfriend, can when I die, if I happen to die, um, you know, spontaneously, can you make Throw sure you this go laptop? Check? <laughs> Erase my uh, search features. That is what Red Phoenix will do for you. And so will Tiffany Bryce. Yes, most definitely. Um, some people are saying. Sharice Sinclair is great too. Yeah, I've heard about Sharice, but I haven't really read anything from her. Um, Sharice, what's her name? Sharice, Sharice Sinclair. Okay. Happy for now. So that for you. There you go. So you can get the right spelling for it. She's big okay. into BDSM as well. I do Ooh, know that. Thank I yeah. want to say it's the Shadowlands series. Um, that she does. Have you read any Sherilyn Kenyon? You don't, do you don't, do you read mm -hmm. a lot of paranormal? 
No, not big in the paranormal. That is Lauren's go-to author. They have been trying. Lauren and Amanda. I was say that's Amanda. Read it. Yep. Amanda reads paranormal. They love some Sherilyn Kenyon and the Jay Daniels. I think it is. Um, uh, I think that's the name of it. And I read one book and I was just like, oh, okay. It's paranormal. It's Shifter, um, werewolves. And I think a mixture of vampires, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I just feel like my October is going to be very heavy paranormal fantasy romance. Yeah. Now. Bring me some more Elvin King. (laughs) Right? Okay. So, but now I will say the darkest book that I think I have ever read or actually it's, it's a series. It's called The Life of Anna series. And it's by Marissa Honeycutt. And you can only find it on Amazon right now uh, in the bundle. And it's kind of expensive, but um, at the same time, it is so good. I mean, I literally stayed up and devoured these books, all like four of them. And then I uh, had to wait until the fifth book came out, I think it was. And then once I got the fifth book, I like stayed up and just devoured it. I was like, oh, I can't. Oh my goodness. And it just, it, I just kept going down into a hole, into a hole, into a hole. And then I was like, okay, there's got to be some light here at some point, mm-hmm. you know? And it didn't come until like book, end of book four. I actually, I think book four ended it in a dark place as well. It didn't come until like book five or something like that. And I was just like, oh but I need more. Give me more. And the series was amazing. Yeah, I've missed that. I think that's why I've had an issue with the books that I've been reading so far in 2019. It's just like, I haven't, I've read some good stuff, but nothing that I'm like, oh my God, I have to stay up until I finish this book. That's Mm -hmm. what I need. I want a book that comes that I'm just like, I'm staying up until I finish this book. And I haven't had that. So. Right. uh, Charles just got here, by the way. Hi, Charles. We just got done talking about you and how much you hated the right swipe. (laughs) (laughs) Charles was dragging that book. So you have a question. Have you read Susan Wright? Wright. No, I have not. Let me pull her up on Goodreads. I found Cherise Sinclair. What's the name of the series? Masters of the Shadowlands? Yep, that is the series for her BDSM. All right, I'm gonna put. Ooh, ooh, look at that cover. Okay, mm-hmm. now I'm pulling up Suzanne Wright. What pops up first? Feral Sins, the Phoenix Pack. I'm gonna oh. put the. Ooh, I got, it's got a werewolf on it. Okay, <laughs> shifters. What? <laughs> Give me some shifters here. Yes, please. Um, Lisa is asking if we have read any Christine Phelan. Oh my God, I saw Fahan? her somewhere today. I was just seeing her somewhere. Where was I? Um, Audible Escape, I think, has a bunch of her books. Yes, that's where I saw her. I saw it on Audible Escape. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Let me look and see what title it is, and then we can find out if it's Christine Behan. Okay. Okay, so they have Dark Legacy, Judgment Road. She's got a lot on Fire uh, Audible Escape. Did you oh, keep wow. your Audible Escape, though? Oh, Dark yes. KU. Okay. Oh, yes. That That's staying. That is definitely staying. Oh, uh, Charles. Charles. She she has a lot on Audible Escape. So just really? let us know what you're recommending. It was Hidden Currents. That's what popped up for me first. So if that's if you okay. recommend that one, then let me know. I will. We will have to check uh, her out. Uh, Charles wants to know about Willow Winters. And yes, I have read Willow Winters. I love me some Willow Winters. Homegirl is dark. She dark too. Willow She's very Winters. dark. Yes. There is one of her books. She's actually renamed it, and I don't know what the name of it is now. Um, but I legit read one of the scenes and sat in the bathroom crying in tears for like 20 minutes. What? 
Yes, it was heavy, heavy. And just like out of nowhere, well, sort of out of nowhere, I was just like, Ooh, you it kind of led up to it. The story led up to it. And then when the scene actually was explained and, uh, you know, was told, I was just like, I, ooh, it what was, book it is hard. it? Um, have a- like I said, Charles, I what was- book are you reading, Charles? Yeah, she's out a lot. I've never heard of her. Oh, Willow Winters. Wait a minute. I think this Cards of Love has popped up on my Amazon recommendations, unless there's another series that has covers that look like this. No, so that is the actual series of um, sort of a whole bunch of authors that wrote in okay. the same world. Okay. Um, so that That's one's a probably little, why. Yeah. Uh, Charles, I am sorry, but we went in on Faker earlier. Um, <laughs> tell me he's not reading it and loving it there's no way he's loving it okay. he doesn't rate anything above three stars so <laughs> <laughs> okay Charles leave me a comment about um, how you what you're thinking about Faker so we can add it into and maybe get back on that hot tea <laughs> oh my gosh um, looking at the little winters right now Okay, what is it called? You're looking at the one you read? Yeah. Is she like an ind- indie author? Mm-hmm. Okay. She has a huge book box too. That's like oh, really? out there. Yes. Uh, that's they're, where I've seen her. Yep. On they're Instagram. kind of expensive, but uh, I haven't gotten one because they're out my price range. But uh, they look like yeah, they have a whole bunch of good stuff. They're they have like a whole bunch of good stuff in there. I want to be a rep for a box. Right? I'm like, how can I get <laughs> to be a rep? Why do I have to keep spending my money? I think that was on the pod. That's on the podcast. I think it is called A Kiss to Tell. No. Nope. The one that made you cry? Mm-mm. That is not the one that made me cry. That is the one I read after her podcast book. And I was like, I was a little uh, perturbed by that. Okay. Charles is currently reading Girl He Used to Know. I've seen that around. Have you seen oh, that one around? I love that one. Isn't that one by Tracy Garvis Grease or yeah. something like that? Yep. Yep. I loved it. I loved that one. Surprisingly, because we know my track record. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that one. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, no, I have not read any Nalini seeing. Uh, especially this one. Um, I have tried and I'm, I don't know. If she's I, for you. Well, I haven't actually finished a book. I haven't even really started one. I'll pull it out from, I think the first one is on the Audible Escape program and is it angel's blood is that it because it's yeah i think so she's yeah. actually got quite a few on audible yep and i think i have it but i just haven't read it yet and i'm just like oh. she's a big deal staff i hear Naomi saying all over the place that is what i heard but i have a hard time saying her name so i'm not trying to get on a video and be like yeah I think we just need to try something. Well, I can't say really random because we just read about elf sex, but I mean. <laughs> okay. So I found the uh, Willow Winters book and it's called Little Liar Now. And it was renamed from She Asked For It. And yes, the reason um, the, I'm pretty sure the reason she changed it is because 
uh, she asked for it was a little on the nose for the title. Mm. And I didn't, in my review, I know I didn't go into what exactly it was about because I was like, just think of this title and then you will sort of know what the book is about. But that was, that's the book that I spent 15 minutes in the bathroom in two years, just whew, in my feelings. So in my feelings. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Charles said you're too savage. Um, let's see. I feel like we need another romance readathon to come along. Mm, let's see. Tropathon is going to be at the end of the month. Is it? Um, yeah. Oh, and it yeah. has a bingo board or whatever that uh, that's out there. So, I don't know why I thought I missed. I thought we already did Tropathon. I don't know why I'm thinking that. What was in did. September? I, what was September? Well, Let's see. Was, we did Nameathon, Contemporary Athon, um, Sabathon, Tropathon, I think we did in the summer as well. Okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. So, uh, Charles wants to know is it bad that he adores mate romance? What what is mate romance? Am I missing something? Yeah, what are you talking about, Charles? Are you talking about like some shifters or something? Are you talking about <laughs> breeding? Because I'm down for the breeding. Um, you need to read Claiming the Elven King. <laughs> yes, you do. Especially if you're down for some breeding. Oh. Yes. That was good. Yes, yes. Charles, yes. you need to do a recommendation video. Yes. Anything upcoming that we're excited for? So I'm excited for the Bromance Book Club, but Stephanie's <laughs> already read it. <laughs> I'm like an, a chapter into it, and it is good. I just wish Berkeley would send me a damn physical copy, okay? I'm putting it out there because I hate reading on that galley. <laughs> Girl, people are, are you, you know, I like that Central Park Pack series by Lauren Lane, like the new yep. one just came out. People yep. already got arcs for the new book. And I'm like, this book just came out like two weeks ago. Wait a second. How do I get a plug? Wait a second, because um, I should be on that team because I actually read Passion uh, before it came out. So, and I left my little review to make sure that they knew that I love the book um beforehand so I'm gonna need to go up on I got on that gallery I got passion I guess somebody I don't know what her title is but she reached out to me like right after a release like hey I know that you wanted this book I'm gonna send it to you cool so then I went and hauled the new one and I'm sitting on stories I'm like people already got the third one and don't come out till January this one just came out so yeah, we got to get on these teams. <laughs> How yeah. do we get on these teams? Yeah. So I am looking forward to Off Weird, which is by Avery Flynn. It is the second book in the Ice Knights series that she is doing, and it's an arc. So I already have it. It's on my Kindle it's right there. Did you read Chloe Brown? <laughs> yes, I did. I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was interesting. So you gave it like three stars. <laughs> No, 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 no. I give it four stars. I'm pretty sure I gave it four stars. Um, <laughs> now, mind you, okay, uh, work for it by Tell You Heard. Girl, oh my goodness. Oh, that good. one, it is so, it's so different. Let me add it to so my memory. So different. Uh, it doesn't come out yet. By the way, I was in oh, okay. Um, All right. <laughs> and I got the fangirl because uh, guess who uh, contacted me this morning and was like, I noticed that you wrote that you would like to, uh, you know, make money on, you know, things that you're doing and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, what? yeah thanks. And she was like, hey, here's a suggestion. I was like, first of all, let me finish fangirl real quick. <laughs> Talia Hibbert reached out to me, okay? She reached out to me in a direct, direct message. I was like, oh, that's and awesome. girl down, giving me suggestions on how to improve myself. I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. So what did she say? I appreciate I you. I mean, don't you don't have to spill all the tea. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I am so up for sharing. I'm, that's I'm so all awesome. About sharing. Um, but she was saying, you know, to reach out to uh, companies that I think that I could 
you know, help cross, uh, cross promote things. Mm -hmm. And so many people are like, Hey, can you do a vlog? Can you do a reading vlog? This and that. And I was like, I'm not interesting. I literally drop my kid off at school and then I come home and I get in bed and, and, I, you guys don't, and I read until it's time to pick him up, you know, eight hours later. You guys don't want to see that in film. And sh the way she said, she was like, if you reach out to people, you know, do like a sort of commercial in between, you know, the things that you're reviewing. And I was like, oh, that would totally work for a reading blog. I could, you know, go drop him off if it's a tea or if it's a coffee or if it's a shirt or anything like that, I can be like, Oh, see, I got this package. I got this, you know, something, something, or That's here's my tea they for the day. And, want. you know, put a little 30 second thing in there and then be cross promoting stuff. So I'm like, thank you very Girl, much. Because Diana, you know, totally the big booktubers be like today, we're going to tie shoes. Yep. And out to Squarespace. For sponsoring this video. Right. Or back to time my earrings. Too. Right. Look at my earrings. I'm wearing such and such today. And that's all too. it takes. That's you all know, I want book. you to do. Just yep, mention exactly. it and leave it in the links down below. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no shade, but shade. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, Danny. I liked The Negotiator as well by Avery Flynn. She is absolutely amazing, by the way. Mm -hmm. And she only lives down the uh, street for me. Well, not really down the street, but like close to me, like seriously close to me. Um, so it's always nice to see her. At right, talk about, like that. Oh, you know, Brenda Jackson is in San Antonio and <gasps> I don't get to see her. That feel good uh, thing that Harley went, I just $200 for a ticket, Steph. It was two, the tickets is $200? It was like $200. I can't. Um, I'd have to pass, yeah, I'd have to pass on that one too. <laughs> okay. mm. Mm. Oh, they was posting it on the stories. I'm like, y'all just couldn't reach out to your girl. Like, I would have swept the floor, whatever, just to be there and get Brenda Jackson to sign my Love on Catalina Code book. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, Miss J Miss Bev follows me too. I was, I about fell out the day I found that out too. I was like. She just commented on something that I wrote on Twitter. It was a, on Twitter, it yeah. was like a couple months back. Miss Bambi scooped And then, out. and then I looked and was like, "Oh, she follows me." I was like, "Oh." Because when I posted about what you girls are not going to be doing when it comes to you know reigning queens of romance, Miss she Beth sure did. Yes, she um, did. She sure like, did comment. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> we are on her radar. Yes. The queen. <laughs> okay. So a couple of other arts that I have um, that I need to read is the new Rebecca Witherspoon. I think it's, I think it's pronounced Zena. Um, she is a trip. I love her on, on, on the Twitter. She's so funny. So funny on the Twitter. <laughs> Um, and then I have the, the first book in a trilogy by Dylan Allen, which is Between Now and Forever. Now, this is like the follow up to the Read Me Romance uh, novella that she did about this couple. And I'm like here for it because when I read that novella or listened to the novella, I was like, um, hey, Dylan, you going to write the rest of the story? Because I need to know I need more to about know. this couple. I need to know. And she was like. No problem. I'm just gonna write a trilogy about it. I was like, yes. <laughs> you don't get one. You don't get two. Yeah, get three. I got three. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, I'm going to be reading Wonder Love by Rachel Blaufeld. So I'm super excited about that one. And I am going to be tackling The Right Escape by Cherish Reed. Um, I'm, I purchased Ooh, it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw it was over on Twitter and stuff like that, and she was putting it out. I think it's about a journalist or something like that, but the setting is in Ireland, and you say Ireland, I'm like, where, when, how? Here's my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and as a matter of fact, it's an interracial couple, and it's by a black author. I'm like, here, how, how, how much <laughs> is that? <laughs> Let me just go ahead and throw that at you. Um, so yes, yes, and everybody is agreeing with us that two hundred dollars is insane for um 
for a, you know, ticket. ticket. I couldn't do it. Right? I mean, you can just imagine if it's $200 for us, how much those authors are paying for the tables and stuff like that. So, And I think it was only three authors. It was Brenda Jackson and I don't even know who else. I just knew Brenda Jackson was going to be there. But the lady from Young and the Restless, Victor Newman's wife, Nikki, she was like the host, which is weird. Why would she be the host? Hmm, Okay. Maybe she's like a romance writer on the low we just don't know about. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Okay. India wants to, you know, her, her, <laughs> my, no, my mouse keeps pushing on hers. I guess it wants us to tell, you know, so which one, um, but let's see, Lisa would like to know, um, cowboy romance. Oh my gosh. I love James cowboy Bay romances. Mm, I love cowboy romances. Maisie Yates. Maisie Yates, her gold Valley series. I love it. I love I cowboy did romance. enjoy I did enjoy those books from Maisie Yates. Um, so Beverly Rebecca has some cowboys in hers too. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, she does. And I'm pretty sure that one of them was picked up by Passion Flicks. I okay. believe it was Beverly Jenkins' book that was picked yeah, up. Something by was turned into. Yes, yeah, she had a movie. She has a movie. Yeah, that one was turned into a movie. Um, but Rebecca Witherspoon has a cowboy book coming out in 2020. <gasps> yeah. I already got the arc. <laughs> oh, I got it too, which I have. Yeah, it I, should. I, I, I was like, you should. Alley. It's it's I Met suck. Gally. So go, go, you know, grab it up. And if you can. Oh, okay. So the book that is set in Ireland for India is called the right escape and i will spell that out for you oh it's spelled like w-r-i-d-h-t right uh no it's spelled like right like i'm writing something oh right okay yeah i saw that that's such a cute cover yes it is very cute and i got it on audio because she said the audio narrator is supposed to be good as well i think it is by people that um that I know. Oops, hold on. Steph, you just have to do another video that's like lesser known books that deserve more love. Like I know you did your indie authors, but you have to. <laughs> I can do recommend. Oh my goodness. So if for you guys that don't know, when I do a um pretty much when I do any video. When I do a tag video, when I do a recommendations video, specifically says recommendations, my tag videos are pretty much recommendation videos. They're based off of the questions in the tag, but at the same time, they're recommendations for, you know, certain topics and things like that for you guys. So, you know, you can always use those recommendations or those tag videos as recommendations as well. Maybe it's because I'm like new again, but are tags not what they used to be on the booktube? <laughs> you ain't killing me with this, the booktube. Because <laughs> you know, we used to have a tag for everything, right? Now I was like, I haven't seen a tag video in a minute. That's because the youngsters think that it's not cool to do tags. And I'm like, I will do a tag every other week if I possibly can. Tuesday, so <laughs> yeah, right. It's like fluffers, like fillers for your channel. Yes, yes. And as long as you like, so my philosophy when it comes to a tag, since we are so deep in the 2019, and even when we're like in the beginning of a year, I only use the books that I have read in that, that year. year to fill out those tags. So I'm not. I I don't think I've ever really like talked about the same book over and over and over again, you know, in the same video. So it's not like, oh, here's the question. Question number one is this. Oh, it's this book. Question number two. Oh, it's this book again. Do you no, think man. people don't pay attention? No, they be paying attention. I've seen okay. in comments of 
other people's videos where somebody's right? like, you talk about that book all the time. And I'm like, right. Damn. Can we talk about more than like five books? <laughs> you know, like, let her live, but you right. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Bad when you kind of know what to expect, but I mean. Right, exactly. Uh, so Charles said he's not a fan of reasons. Charles, why are you not a fan of reasons? Readathons are the best. Oh, they are Charles. so great. They give you Debbie Downer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So the thing with readathons for me is that I craft them to fit me and my mood reading because we all know that I'm a mood reader. Y'all may Damn. see me. You may see that I put out a you know, uh, a TBR and be like, oh, here's my TBR for this. But you don't really do TBRs though. No, I don't. <laughs> and if I yeah. do, and if I do do a TBR, every single challenge has two, sometimes three books to go along with it. Cause I'm like, yeah, like you'll do for like contemporary thon, you'll put a TBR for that. But cause I was trying to decide, do I want to do TBRs for the beginning of the month or whatever? I really don't like doing TBRs. And I was just kind of looking at my friends, like, what does everybody do? And I'm like, Steph really only puts TBRs out if it's something going on. She mm -hmm. just does her weekly wrap up. And that's where you figure, you know, get to see what she read. Yep. And like, um, I do my first Tuesday of each month where I put out my romance genre song one, which is the year long one that I'm doing um, mm -hmm. that, you know, everybody's can follow along or whatever. But um. And I'd use the categories and stuff like that, but I'll have like six books on there and I may get to three of them. I may get to, you know, two of them. So it's not even like an issue. It's because I'm just like, okay, yeah, I did read it, but you know. Yeah. It's no pressure. Nope. Yeah. And I don't like the pressure, but for like a week long readathon, I will have two or three books per mm -hmm. challenge or per, per prompt just for that reason, because there will be times that I'm like, um, what I think I posted a picture over on Instagram the other day that was like, <laughs> I got this Kindle full of books of arts that I need to read, but I don't want to read a single one of them. And I think I started reading Concerto by Sky Warren and was like, okay. <laughs> and it's like, doesn't even, doesn't even stress me out or anything like that. Yeah. So. Charles, tell us why you don't like readathons and anybody else that doesn't like them, tell us why. I mean, I just don't stress myself by focusing on the challenges. He said he's too lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like I posted my TBR for Spookathon. I'm not focusing on the challenges. I just have a couple of books that are spooky that I wanted to read and I'm gonna read them. Oh, our friend Allison says the thing people do way too many readathons. Oh yeah, there are. There are some months where there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what the hell is a scallywagathon? I'm not participating in scallywagathon. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm not. Mm -mm. No, nope. I like the like low key one, like November. It's nonfiction November. Do mm -hmm. your thing. You have the whole month. Brie asks if we're stressing ourselves out on it. No, no. Nope. Yeah, TBRs. Yeah, I don't like doing TBRs. I mean, I don't like setting a TBR for the month because I am a mood reader. But if it's mm -hmm. a readathon and it's like spooky books, okay, I have this whole pool I can pick from. Is somebody going to hold me accountable if I don't read it? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. And really, nobody's going to hold you accountable, anyways. It's like, yes. it, I, except for yourself. So as long as you can be okay with just sort of, you know, moving through the challenges as you see fit because you know your moods and, you know, don't let yourself get so bogged down with only reading the things that you picked out a week ago. You know, it, it's all good. That's why good. my favorite, and it's probably the low, most low key, no judgment one out there. Hashtag Smutathon. <laughs> I be killing it during Smutathon. <laughs> I get on good old Audible Escape. <laughs> be downloading some ratchetness. Yep. And yep. I'm good for them seven days. Yep. Oh, I love it. I love it. 
Because it's so, so low. Indy, Indy says she likes picking books for challenges because it makes you think about the theme of the book. This is true, but coming from a person that doesn't read synopsises and goes into all her books blind. <laughs> I got to know something. What's I got to know a little bit about the book. I got to know nope. a little bit. Nope. I don't need to know nothing. nothing. Oh, my God. Do I like the cover? Look, do I like the cover? Yes, I do. Do I know the author? Yes, I do. I'm going to read it. <laughs> that's all that's, you need to know. That's it. That's it. That's all. I mean, I might read the first sentence of something that I find on Audible Escape, but for the most part, when it comes to Audible Escape, I go to the category, I go to like the different character aspects that they have on there, and then I pick, and then it's about the cover. If the yeah. cover grabs my eye and I'm like, hmm, I want to know about this story because of this cover, I'm picking it, and that's going to fit for that challenge. That's how, that's how I roll. That's how I go. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, Charles over here talking about he wants some more one star books. Charles, one star books, really? Faker. You can read Faker for that. <laughs> Dude, Charles gives everything one star. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I don't think Charles is here. Okay, Charles, we're going to read Halloween Boo by Sarah Spade. And you have to read it. I don't know if it's going to show up. I don't know. Here's the cover, Charles. Download the book. <laughs> Halloween Boo by Sarah Spade. We're going to read it, and when we reconvene, we're going to talk about the book. <laughs> I wonder how many books he's read this month. He's probably got a TBR of like 60 books. His TBR is be cracking me up. I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm read gonna 80 books in October. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm just like, damn, dude, I I read nine. <laughs> I'm proud of my nine. What's I'm really going proud on? Of my nine books. <laughs> oh goodness, we have so many new people here. It is so amazing. Thank you Hi, guys. Everybody. Yes, you guys are so awesome for hanging and chilling out with us and discussing with us and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I need to take that off. Charles, I hope you wrote that down. Um, oh, he said, hell to the no. Yeah, <laughs> you will, Charles. It's gonna be great. We are reading it all this month, okay? No judgment, it's a no judging zone. We're reading it all this month. We just read claimed by the elven king yes we did in like a day in like a day so, um, it was the trash blue. that we needed blue we do not have a book club but uh we're all sort of connected over by uh the twitter on the twitter yes <laughs> the twitter everything is the in our world the youtube the twitter uh, we don't talk about Facebook anymore, so there is no the Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> the gram. The gram. Yes, yes. So what's funny, right, is that people over on, there's still some people that use the Facebook. And there are some people that are like, oh, I want to be your friend. And I'm like, mm, no, sorry. That's we only got my granny and me. Right? That's <laughs> right? That's but I do brand. hear there's some really good like romance groups on Facebook. Oh, I'm I'm part of all a lot of the. There's a lot of them. There's really them. there are so many because I know Jess. She buys a lot of books off of the Facebook groups. <laughs> I haven't found. Any. <laughs> I haven't found any. <laughs> I just follow a couple of authors. <laughs> But the Facebook be um be spying on you, okay? Because yes. and it doesn't even matter. It does not matter. All of your devices that we have around us, Are they all spy Facebook. us. Yeah, they all spy on us. Because I know there was one time, neither one, my husband nor I, had been on. He was at work, as a matter of fact. He was talking about something or another, and then he got home. 
and it showed up on the Facebook as an ad. And we were like, what oh, wow. is going on? We made mention of our pool closing and oh, here's a couple it's ads. On the it's on the Facebook. <laughs> um, like seriously. So the Facebook be spying on you and I don't even care, but you know, I don't be trying to hook up with anybody. So don't Facebook, be offended. It's- it's for grandparents. Do they just want to, you know, see pictures of the kids? But the romance groups are on there. Somebody says they don't even use Facebook. <laughs> I took a year hiatus. I didn't get rid of it. I just told my sister, here's my password, change it so I can't get on it. And it was lovely. It was lovely. Really? I should have stuck with it. I don't know. I just got bored one day, like, okay, I'm ready to get back on. But oh, it was, wow. It wasn't bad. Wow. Now if I could just do it with the gram and the Twitter. But oh no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I won't be getting over no. No. <gasps> I'll be keeping both of those. Especially now that uh I'm figuring figuring the gram out. Uh yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that I switched from a personal account to a business. Business. Account. Yeah. And you got now to. Now you I have get a brand. You a little to. more. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I told Charles, like, you need to make an Instagram. I wouldn't know what to do with an Instagram. Post <laughs> pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure they're pictures that you took if you're going to use hashtags. I yeah. did learn that out the hard way. And uh, through research, I have found out that if it doesn't look like it is a picture that you took yourself, uh, it's very less likely to show up in those hashtags. So mm-hmm. unless they are promotion hashtags themselves. So yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Charles want to be smart. Instagram, Charles. <laughs> I know oh. you got a phone. He probably secretly got one. He just don't want us to know. No, Danny, we are not calling you old. <laughs> no. I have the Facebook. (laughs) I just, you know, you have like two lives. You have the Facebook life and the gram life. I try not to mix the Facebook with the gram and vice versa. I hate it when people I know in real, like my family find me on Instagram. Like, come on, dude. We follow each other on the Facebook. (laughs) <laughs> I, my, my, actually, my Instagram is connected to my Facebook. So, oh, I need a thing, fake one. <laughs> <laughs> I made a fake one. The things that I post on the the Instagram uh, show up on my Facebook. On your Facebook. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, that's so cool. That's cool. Because I mean, I do have some in real life friends that follow me that I don't think have muted me, but they probably could have because I talk a lot of, a lot about books. I'm telling you guys, if you have a platform, so, you have got to utilize Instagram. You have to, if you have a, if you're a YouTuber, a blogger, a podcaster, you have to use, you have to use Instagram to boost your stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, an, it's essential now. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just to even just to show, Hey, I'm reading this book right now, or this is the setting that I'm reading this book in. People are interested in that. It's like crazy. Cause yeah. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, they're all about aesthetics too. And I'm like, I'm not down for that aesthetic thing. You know, yeah. I don't want all my pictures to look exactly the same just because mm-hmm. that's my aesthetic. And that's the that's- only gripe that I have with the, with the gram. I'm just like, I love the fall, but I don't want my pictures to look like it's the fall. All, all the year time around but yeah. i think even with instagram the the stories is what's popping like you want to utilize the stories but you would be really surprised that so many people don't know about the stories and but or, they're yeah or instagram tv where you can post 10 minute videos, videos up on there yeah. you know so yeah okay so charles has given us a video idea do you know how hard this video idea is, Charles? How about try a page or try an audio sample? Here he goes, Mr. Books on Stereo. You do the audio sample because we know you got a TBR of like 80 books. 
Okay, so let me tell you a little something about audiobook stereo or samples. I can't get into them because I can't speed them up. And I don't like any narrator for the most part that talks at one speed. Cannot stand it. Oh yeah. I'm just not gonna do it. If I can't speed it up and get it to the comfort of my ear, I'm not trying to listen to it. The only reason I listened to that one audiobook that uh that was over on that I retweeted, I think it was over on uh, Twitter mm-hmm. was because the actual sample of it was so hot and steamy. But when I sped it up, his voice was so gravelly. It was just like, yes. Ooh, ooh, that's so dirty. That's so dirty. Uh, it was called Breeze Blessing. I think it was. Uh, and it was about that. It was alien smut. It was like straight up alien smut. Alien. Oh. One of my pet peeves, I just downloaded the uh, audiobook to a time travel romance. And you know, sometimes they sound like they've got their voice too close to the mic. Oh, a lesson in thorns. You can hear all of her stuff in the back. Yeah. She be like, she's like taking breath. She's like, <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> That's how my my I'm current like, oh. one is. I'm just like, but then it's at the same time she has a quiet voice. It's just weird. So like, there's some scenes where I turn it all the way up because I feel like I can't hear her, and then some scenes where I have to turn it down some. So it's weird. But I'm just like, well, it was only seven dollars, so I can't. Look at our it. extra friend. Look at our extra friend. Oh yeah, Elvin extra. King. The last couple chapters, I listened to it on three point five. What? How yeah. do y'all listen to it on anything above? I can't listen above two. I can't. I don't think there has been a single book I that don't I don't like. To. Like that's my only gripe with overdrive is that it only goes to two because three is my speed. Oh wow. I can't do it. I can't. Ooh. You can get so much red since you listen that fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you think my numbers are astronomical. That 3.5 t- turns two hours into like yes. <laughs> an hour. Yes. yes, I have Charles Red Ruby Dixon. You need to get up on her Fireblood Dragon series. I love it. Love it. Love it. Ruby Dixon. Let me ask. Yes. It. Yes. Fireblood Dragon. Now, the first book is a little hard to take because you're introduced to the dragons. And you don't know what's going on with them. So there isn't a lot of dialogue or anything like that. But as the story progresses, you start to understand it. It's post-apocalyptic. It's set in the United Fire States. Fire in his blood. This yes. one? That okay. one right there. Yes. And she has six of them, I think. Six or seven. Six, six of those books. And they all follow different dragons. And then the story starts to progress. And you're just like dragged in and I'm just like yes but Ruby has said since her last book um, was about a female dragon she is in a bit of a slump for the dragons right now okay. and so she went back to Ice Planet Barbarians and that whole thing that's really is. popular right now too that is very popular very very popular um, but I'm just like alright so Danny says she can't do smut on audio Girl, why can't you? Mm. <laughs> yes, that that's why I love it. It is very close to porn in my ears. What? Um, the what was it called? I just oh, I'm pretty sure I told I I wrecked it to you, uh, Bree, to read the Vincent series, uh-huh. the Doctor Vincent series by Renee. Oh, what is her last name? Hmm. Let me get to it. Renee Mason, The Good Doctor Trilogy. That is straight up dirty, dirty, just all kinds of sex. Ooh, that one is fire. Five fire. <laughs> yes, like more than five. Five times five, it's crazy. Oh my goodness, because it is polyamory and it has some male male, some male female, some male male female. Woo, it's always you know that like I've heard a lot of romance readers say that they can't listen to 
they don't listen to romance on audio because of whatever reason. But I can't imagine not listening to it on audio. I don't know. I don't have a problem with, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. But it's, that's that's it, an answer that I see a lot. Yeah, it, it's because it's the super hotness. And, you know, sometimes the situations yeah. you be in, you can't go, you know, take care of yourself. Uh, All you got to do is fast as, forward. Just press that little area, arrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. goodness. Oh, goodness, goodness. All right. So we are over two hours. So I think we should cut it for the night. I'm pretty sure my child has, I hope he has went to bed. snuck out the house. (laughs) Oh, oh my goodness. Craziness. Uh, Danny likes uh, romance on audio, but not explicit sex. Okay. That's what she says. I feel that. So, So, yeah. So what do you want to end off with? So tomorrow you're recording. Tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna, recording, and then next week I am getting into all those art reads that I had, that whole list and stuff like that. Uh, it's crazy. I have a whole bunch of them, so I'm getting into them. And I have a vlog coming out tomorrow. I did a weekly vlog. Yay. Yay. I don't, the editing girl, I, I did the video, started editing it, ruined it, had to start over. I'm over it. I'm so over it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, so before we go, I did want to ask you. <clears throat> so how important is it for you to edit your blog posts? Because I have not to be mean, but I've read a couple blog posts lately that are just like, did you do any type of editing whatsoever? I mean, missing letters and, you know, granted, my brain is telling me what this word is, but mm-hmm. mm, the editing is just not good. Not good at all. So you know, do you have like a program or whatever that you do for your blogging? Uh, No, but there's one that gets recommended to me all the time when I'm on there. I think it's called like Grammarly or something. But I just, I'm like, people type your stuff and read through it. Even when you read through it, are you, do you may like skip over something? Yeah, but just read through your stuff. But I don't think a lot of, I mean, I think so many people, they, uh, like pre-blog, they just do a bunch of posts and then schedule them. And I think that they just don't review them like they should. I see. Okay. So I'm finishing another bottle. Another bottle. I've had a glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did an entire bottle. This is the last of it right here. Yes. So y'all be on the lookout. Steph will have a video tomorrow. I'll have a vlog tomorrow. Everybody download the book and we will reconvene. Let me pull it up one more time in all its glory. Halloween boo. Yes. Yes. And we will talk about the book. Treat yourself. Don't go into the book expecting too much about it. Just too just, much about it. Have it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. Yes. Yes. Have yes. fun. I've been hearing that it's really good. So we're <laughs> going to go in with the expectation of it's a good time. Get you yep. some wine. Get on that couch. Read the book. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> and oh, we yeah. will reconvene and talk about it. All righty, you guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Make sure that you come back. If you need Bree's information, I will go and fill all that information in. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go over with the whole chat and stuff like that, but I have written down some things from our notes Mm -hmm. and uh, I'll make sure that I put that stuff in the description box and this video will stay up on my channel. Yeah. And we did one last weekend and and we lost it. And we lost it. We lost it. So, and if there's stuff y'all want to talk about, Yes, let us know. know. Put it on the on the schedule to you know chat about it. We will do these on Fridays or Saturdays. We're not sure if we're going to do them bi monthly or if we're going to do them weekly. Depends on what you guys are you know feeling or if there's a hot take that we need to jump into. 
<laughs> we will schedule one because, you know, uh, that's how we roll. But yes. yes, it has been fun. It's been a great night. Thank you guys for showing up and chatting with us. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. All right. I did it. Okay.